Since its establishment in 2002, the Independent Broadcasting Authority, IBA, has continued to play an important role in the media space. Zambia's democratic development continues to thrive, and among the many players are the diverse media stakeholders. Specific to broadcasting, the IBA has the following mandate. Our work is to regulate the media in Zambia, and therefore we do receive, well, for example, applications for licenses, and those applications are conducted by ourselves and we um, try to grant a license to would-be licensees and in the process of granting that license when they've started their work we have the power to revoke to suspend or, or indeed to withdraw completely the license this iba mandate is enshrined by law in the independent broadcasting authority act the Independent Broadcasting Authority was created firstly by Act of Parliament and that is Act Number 17 of 2002. Now this Act Number 17 of 2002, which is like the Bible or main act or the principal act, so far has undergone two amendments. The first amendment was by Amendment Act Number 26 of 2010, various amendments there for example how to suspend or how to, to cancel a license and just basically certain areas that were perceived to be weak in the principal act were amended and strengthened by this amendment act number 26 of 2010. That was the first amendment. Then later on now, about seven years later in 2017, again the act was amended by amendment act number 18 of 2017. So that is the act. So the principal act is one. Act number 17 of 2002 as amended by act number 26 of 2010 and also act number 18 of 2017. At the Lusaka-based office, IBA staff are tasked to carry out various activities. On a day-to-day -day basis, what we do, um, there's a lot of actually listening to radio, uh, watching TV, there's a lot of following uh, what's happening on social media, Facebook, just in case we receive a complaint from the public. So one of the first things we do in the morning is to check what's happening in the media. And then um, if we have any complaints on our desks, we have a service charter that deals with complaints, so we try and get it out to the station that aired within 48 hours. So those are some of the things that we do on a daily basis. Each officer is assigned is your individual stations and the regions that we have. Licenses are expected to appear to the um, standards of operating procedures and the SOPs, standard operating procedures have been enshrined, have been written down in this booklet. This is a booklet that was developed by the IBA as well. And everything that is in this booklet um, was uh, necessitated from the Act. If we simply lifted what the Act has provided and decided to break down some of those uh, provisions so that we can make our licenses understand what we want and what we expect from them. Essentially my work really is field work but when I'm at the office I just ensure that uh, I have a run through checking that all the broadcasting stations across the country uh, okay we haven't received any information technical wise uh, issues that I actually am supposed to be able to attend to. When I'm here, it's a lot of uh, research and um, everything to do technical to ensure that our broadcasting station are compliant. For our role uh, as a technical unit, we are actually responsible for the provision of ICT services and solutions to the authority to make sure that the authority indeed utilizes these solutions for its service and delivery to the public. Yeah, so uh, in a nutshell, on a day-to-day -day basis, we actually uh, ensure that uh, the ICT uh, uh, systems are running smoothly uh, in terms of uh, the various data that we keep, or licensing data, institutional data, among others. And of course, we have a number of systems uh, in IT that are indeed utilized by various units 
of the authority, you may wish to know that IBA has actually uh, taken IT as an integral strategic tool uh, in the provision of its services and its operational uh, uh, efficiency. We believe that the content should, should not be the same. It, it should be unique in terms of different uh, radio or TV stations. So that from the uniqueness of that uh, content, the public is given the benefit of tuning in to where they think the, uh, the content is correct. We want to give a chance to the non-serviced areas so that they have a radio station or indeed a TV station because we believe that uh, content is power, information is essential to give the members of the public in Zambia but that information should be accurate and professional in its conduct. Away from the offices, the public also have great expectations on what has to be done. And just to remind ourselves, when we hear of the IBA, let us remember it's about licensing broadcasting stations, setting broadcasting standards, enforcing compliance on those that we have issued licenses to, and more importantly, consumer protection. It is in line with our vision to be an effective and efficient regulator that ensures a quality and professional broadcasting in Zambia. One of the mandates of IBA is the issuance of radio and broadcasting licenses. We issue licenses and also we monitor what is, you know, being broadcasted. The board of the IBA, Independent Broadcasting Authority, is the only entity mandated by law to grant licenses and it's the only uh, entity by law uh, uh, mandated to renew licenses. There is uh, part four of the Independent Broadcasting Amendment Act of 2010 that stipulates how the licensing of these uh, stations in Mozambique. We have so far granted um, 198 stations. Of these stations, 146 are radio stations, then about uh, 52 stations are television stations. The licensing of radio and television stations must be done in a very transparent manner. So the Act is very specific when it comes to that. It requires the authority to advertise the available frequencies for radio, and if it's for, for television, the available spaces either on the satellite as well as uh, on the uh, digital uh, 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 platform. We're expected to put up an advert, but prior to that, you know, people are free to make inquiries, uh, express interest in setting up stations, and from there, we will actually now um, you know, come up with a list of areas where you know, uh, people have expressed interest. But we don't just rely on the people you know, expressing interest. We also do our own assessment, looking at where you know, do we have needs for broadcasting. Because that is what the Act you know, says that we uh, need to go up there and identify these areas, uh, either because they do not have a locally based station, or maybe the stations that are broadcasting to those areas are not relevant in terms of language and addressing the issues that concern the people. That particular community. The procedure for application and obtaining a license is followed to detail. I believe relationship starts from the day they walk through this place or when they give us a phone call that they are interested to apply. That's where a relationship begins. So when they apply, I take them through the process, I tell them what to prepare for. There's a process in which now we start um, assessing. There is a technical stage where you know, we look at the proposal from the, you know, the, what is submitted in the business plan, you know, allocate appropriate marks. Normally it's a 50-50, the other 50 goes to a one-on-one -on -one or face-to-face -face interview with the people that are broadcasting, that intend to uh, the broadcasting license. Because um, unlike other businesses, broadcasting is extremely sensitive. We expect that those that uh, want to uh, you know, contribute to the broadcasting sector must be made and made of integrity. So once the, the marks are, you know, are, are collected for interviews and uh, technical assessment, 
uh, with variation, then they are you know, uh, they are combined, and then you know whoever emerges you know top in terms of the um, the ranking in a event where we have more than one or two um, you know applicants for the same frequency, then the frequency will be given to the person who performed uh, above others. The process also requires us that uh, within a particular period of time, in this case, 30 days from the time that the person put you know, puts in an application. As an authority, we have an obligation to get back to that individual or group, group of individuals and inform them of the, of the outcome. If the outcome is a negative, that is, if they've not been given the license, the authority is under an obligation to give um, a reason or a reason why, you know, there is um, a, a, a reason why the reason has to be given, if I may put it that way, uh, in the sense that. Um, um, an individual who is approved with the decision of the board has the right you know, to um, appeal to the Minister of Information and Media um, within 30 days. So they will contest the reasons that the authority gave to say we cannot give you because of ABCD. And if, if you are approved, then they have that they have liberty to uh, make an appeal to the Minister. And if they are again not satisfied with the reasons, you know. Uh, given by the minister in an event that the minister rejects the, the appeal, then the person can go to, to the High Court and seek uh, you know, a request from the High Court. When issued with a license, a broadcaster has to continuously remind themselves what is expected of them in meeting the terms and conditions of the license. One of our functions, some do not like it, but it's one of our functions, is to suspend a license or to cancel a license. And all these are all explained in section um, uh, section uh, 29 circumstances under which a license can either be suspended or cancelled and the job of the IPS to ensure that before cancelling or suspending a license all those are followed. The IBA in such cases may take appropriate actions to ensure that compliance is achieved by the Aerial Broadcasting House. These processes are guided by law. The key provisions that we always cite in the conditions is section 29 that is very key because it outlines circumstances under which a license can either be a cancelled or suspended. We don't want to go there, but please we say, since you are now one of our licenses and we are regulating you, we want you to be alive to this. So can you please make sure that you follow this? One key role that the IBA carries out is monitoring. We go to uh, section 43 up to 44 of the IBA uh, Principal Act of 2002 you will realize that specifically the Act says, you know, uh, for the purpose of uh, enforcing compliance, the institution has to set up um, an inspectorate unit and you belong to that unit that, you know, has that huge responsibility. Don't just aim at issuing uh, licenses, we have to ensure that those that are given licenses uh, comply with uh, the set you know, standards. The IBA Act, uh, number 17, 2002 does provide for uh, specifics when it comes to programming, which is found in section 33. So here we have uh, more or less a code of professional standards, but then what we did as an authority was to get that code of professional standards and develop what we call the standard operating procedure for broadcasting stations. So licensees are expected to adhere to this. All this is done to ensure that licensees conduct their programs in compliance with the law. Our relation with um, the regulator is basically standards, um, the set of guidelines which they give us to follow. And for Mazabuka Community Radio, we have tried our level based to ensure that we live within uh, the set guidelines that IBA has set out for us and we follow them religiously. It's important that we are regulated because of the audience that we are broadcasting to. You know, sometimes when people do not have rules, they will just do things from without. From inception, we developed our own uh, editorial uh, guideline as an institution. Uh, so when IBA came on board and they produced uh, the standard operating procedure, it was almost the same with the guidelines that the station had already established. So what we have done is simply to align our editorial guideline uh, to that of the standard operating procedure of uh, IBA. We are a radio station that thrives to be unique and also 
we follow our editorial guideline by the book and also obviously adhering to the regulations laid down by IBA and Zekta. So we have an editorial policy that takes into account our circumstances here in Shoma. It, it spells out what, what type of content we, we, we are going to put out as a radio station, what type of uh, musical program, what type of music we're we going to run, how we're we going to relate with uh, uh, for example, our sources uh, as we go out to gather our news. When you regulate it, then you know to say what we're giving the people is the right information, is the right content that people need to have, because people at the end of the day need a voice, need people that can stand for them and be able to say, this media house is not, you know, um, abiding and is not being ethical in their reporting, in their broadcasting. And so it's important that we're regulated as media houses. When you decide to start a radio station, I think it is very important for you to understand the industry, to understand what you are getting into, to understand the requirements, not only the requirements for setting up the station, but the requirements for operating the station. It, it, it is not a good thing to, to be in, a, uh, in conflict with the regulations that guide how you operate, and then you say you didn't know about it. In its efforts to improve on timely monitoring of the various television and radio stations, the IBA has invested into state-of-the-art equipment. The broadcasting stations are our stakeholders, and as a regulator, we would like to ensure that uh, all the broadcasting stations are following uh, the set national and international standards technically. As IBA, we are actually responding to the trends in the broadcasting sector because the broadcasting sector has really grown uh, over the years uh, in all areas, in numbers, uh, in terms of technology, innovations. As a regulator for broadcasting, uh, we have seen an opportunity. For all broadcasting stations, it is mandatory that all their broadcasts are stored for a minimum period of three months. The importance of this information storage is that there are a lot of issues that come up. As you know, by law, we are mandated to resolve complaints. So this is the information that we use in case there's any complaint that comes our way. We go back to those recordings and review based on the particular date that, that recording was conducted. There are softwares in place that does recording of everything that happens in there. Right. And uh, we do keep that. I think even if you come two years, something which you three years, three years from now, we will to put it on the So we have a system in place that uh, records what over there. So in terms of compliance, they are very, very compliant. Sometimes making a complaint against a radio or television station can seem like hard work. It should not. Did you know that you can complain against a radio or television station that breaches the Code of Professional Standards set by the Independent Broadcasting Authority, IBA? If anything, complaints are important because they let the broadcasting stations and the IBA to know about your concerns. When the broadcasting stations are producing their editorial policy, it is their promise over what they will do, uh, over the service that they will give to the public. And as a member of the public, if you hear or watch anything that you feel is offensive, for example, you hear a song that's got offensive language, or you think that particular news coverage is not balanced, it's not fair, and you want to complain, the first thing we're supposed to complain to is actually the broadcasting station itself. The act says, firstly, you complain to that station. You write to it, and the law says it will be given 14 days in which to reply. To your complaint. If within 14 days the station responds to you and you're happy, the matter ends there. If they respond to you and you're not happy, or they ought not to respond to you because for one reason or the other, I don't know what could have happened, they don't respond, then you have the right to complain to IBA. An IBA before investigating any complaint against any station has to ensure that these three things are met. One, is it frivolous or vexatious? Two, does it relate to a code of practice of that station? Three, has it been brought within the, the time, the correct time period? That is three months from the day that it was broadcast. The radio and television stations know about this. And also, you as a community must know. You may have heard about this. We have produced a jingle 
Uh, so we have our own jingle and the jingle that we acquired from IBA uh, that uh, speaks to the procedure, the compliance procedure that you need to take in case you are grieved with our content. And that jingle plays before our news, it plays after each uh, news bulletin that we have. So we've provided our platforms um, as guided by the IBA. So we have a jingle that runs every day on air to um, let people know, to make people aware of the fact that they've got the right to actually complain if, for instance, a program that we aired um, wasn't the right program and they were not happy about the program, so they can write to us. Um, they can do so by sending us a text, a normal text message. They can email us and right now there's social media, so they can send us a WhatsApp, uh, it's faster and we will look into that. But uh, maybe a few individuals that would come through to the station to say, okay, maybe there was this bulletin, this particular story that turned on this day. I feel maybe it talked about me, but I wasn't given that platform to, 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 to air out my, my position. So we give them that position. We, we give them the platform to be able to, to hear their complaints and uh, we explain where need be, where there's need for us to retract or apologize, we'll, we'll always do that. Uh, but luckily we don't have so many of such cases. To remedy any problems that may arise between the radio and television stations on one hand and members of the public on the other, a clearly spelled out procedure for lodging complaints has been spelled out. In the event that you, as a member of the public, is aggrieved, with content broadcasts, you may take the following steps. 1. State when the broadcast took place. 2. State who the presenter, DJ or announcer was. And 3. State your name and contact details for further communication by the broadcaster or IBA. We have no difficulties in correcting our errors. We have no difficulties in apologizing when we are wrong. Because we are also human beings, we can err and we can, we, it is only right that when you err, you acknowledge your mistakes and be able to take corrective measures. Uh, and we've done that before and it's not the first time. Of course, we'll possibly err in the future, but we'll also endeavor that when we err and it's been brought to our attention, I think that's what the IBA also uh, tells us in one of their regulations that when you have errored and it's been brought to your attention that you have errored, take corrective action. Again, just to remind ourselves, the IBA Act prescribes that all broadcasting stations develop a code of professional standards. And if for any reason you feel aggrieved in a way a radio or television station has conducted itself, do not hesitate to lodge in a complaint. Complaints are important. Given the diversity of the media industry, and the proliferation of radio and television broadcasters. The IBA works with several stakeholders across the media spectrum. This mutual relationship that Zambia Police Service you know, have with the uh, IBA has brought the police and uh, the media you know, closer. We are you know, counterparts. You know, we understand each other now. Yes, there could be situations where maybe police officers are harassed journalists out there but you agree with me that these cases have reduced drastically, I must emphasize that. We are working as, uh, as partners. So IBA has played, you know, that role of more like a uh, uh, reconciliator, a mediator, you know. Uh, it has uh, brought the media on board and as well closer to the police, understanding each other, and we've penetrated, especially when it comes to issues of safety and security. Well, one of our constituencies is the management of for community radio stations. As you are aware that most of the community radio stations were obtained under MISA and UNESCO and um, uh, these radio stations basically um, they have untrained journalists and we try to bring to speed those untrained journalists with IBA. And not only that, um, when IBA gives a, a license to a radio station, there are conditions attached to it. But many at times when we find that a radio station violates one of the conditions, they are suspended and so forth. So normally MISA mitigates um, uh, on behalf of the radio station to IBA 
and then we go in and do some more um, capacity uh, building. It regulates uh, private television stations, it also regulates private uh, radio stations, so IBA is a regulator. Now us as an NGO, our interest is to promote or to support those private television stations, those independent uh, radio stations whom IBA uh, regulates. So naturally, there's a point where IBA has, and internet or the Open Spaces Zambia project uh, we meet in that IBA regulates and also promote the regulated. Each one of them continues to play an important role, especially working to improve the quality of content reaching the public and that ethical standards are maintained in their programming. We have collaborated uh, with IBA on a number of fronts. Uh, for instance, we conducted a capacity building uh, training uh, workshop specifically for IBA in that we had called an international lawyer who came to have an engagement through a capacity building training workshop with the licensees and inspectors from IBA. IBA basically uh, does a lot of consultation on media issues. Um, we have uh, various media issues uh, arising and before IBA as an authority makes a decision, they will always come back to MISA and ask on our opinion. And most of the times, they've respected the, uh, the opinion of MISA. The experts as a police service when it comes to crime prevention, safety and security. Of course, IBA has brought us on board. Some stakeholders have partnered with IBA to ensure that the requirements of the law are implemented. Here at Zambia Police Service Headquarters, uh, we do have uh, 10 different radio programs in a week to talk to the public on various issues affecting the public. For others, the IBA is a strategic partner in growing not only quantity, but quality in the media industry. In more recent years, the role of the IBA has also been seen as crucial. Such was the case in the run-up to the 2021 elections as the media had to be professional while carrying out various messages for the political players. IBA has been a very key uh, partner of the Electoral Commission of Zambia and not just now but even in the past. So one of the things that we work closely on is the development of the election reporting handbook. So this is an initiative of the Electoral Commission of Zambia and we draw various expertise of um, media personnel from across the country, uh, universities or colleges that undertake some of the media studies to help us develop this uh, handbook. So when the handbook was developed, it has to go through the process of review because we know that times are changing, the environment is equally changing, so you want to bring in experts to help you look at the work that you've done. So IBA has been one of those institutions who have sent us representatives from their um, organization to help us review our election reporting handbook. Zambia Police Service, we are working on our training module uh, in our policing elections you know, handbook. We thought it's important that we incorporate you know, the aspect of media, uh, police officers understanding media and journalists in our operations. So we incorporated that uh, lesson or that topic in our syllabus that, of, um, that consists of training of police officers. And we engaged IBA you know, for their input as well. IBA together with the other media uh, institutions, we engaged them you know, for the input. So in this module that we have, uh, there's a component where we make police officers understand the journalists such that in an event that we meet, we have a police officer who understands you know, what it takes you know, for the journalists to do their work. We have done capacity building for journalists in specialized areas. Like last year, we had uh, capacity building for journalists in uh, uh, election monitoring. We had to look at the SADIC model, the AU model, and also international models. In other cases, the IPA has had to work very closely with the media owners as a way of ensuring that there is a common and mutual understanding around some of the needs of the industry. When uh, the COVID broke out, we and um, uh, IBA and the Minister for um, 
health, we came up with a, a COVID strategy, a communication strategy, and we called all the radio stations and we made them understand that it is for the common good. And the, the, the messages that were broadcasted during that time were for free. But uh, later on, we went back to uh, IBA and told them to say, look here, these people are using money and they need uh, at least uh, something. IBA went to government and the, we were given the first time three million um, uh, kwacha, which we shared to all the radio station and also we were given a million kwacha. So basically these are some of the, the areas where we collaborate with uh, IBA. These interactions are healthy. We also know that collaborations bring in quite a number of resources that include human resource. Human resource comes with its expertise in terms of what they can bring to the table. You may find that the people that sit in ECZ know more about elections management, but you have the media space, and this media space requires an expert to tell you what is happening. We know that IBA and where it sits now, they know the media landscape in this country, like literally on the on their fingertips. Especially that the strategic role of the media in federalizing development and democratic dispensation is a priority area for government. As you know, we are a statutory body under the Ministry of uh, Information and Media, and they are a major stakeholder in terms of police direction. Also, it helps that the media industry players are well consulted by decisions which will eventually have impact on them. When you are making guidelines for such an industry, dynamic industry, you want to be inclusive mm -hmm. so that everybody who is involved is also saying something to the guidelines mm -hmm. so that we are all moving together at the same pace. From its location at the mass media complex in Lusaka, the IBA carries out its day-to-day -day mandate to ensure that all broadcasting houses conduct their role in a productive and responsible manner. We have a strategic plan, we set objectives, and those are the objectives we use to implement the actions set for the year. The relationship between the media players and the IBA requires that they work side by side. One of the things that we want to focus on is to work side by side, other than shake hands, because um, we have to identify the weak areas with our licenses and help them to improve. We want to support these uh, licenses so that we are, we are more like part of it. We are, we are working together to serve a common cause. For the IBA, the message to the broadcasters is simple. Regulation simply means that we want to create sanity in the Republic of Zambia in terms of broadcasting news. We believe that content is king, and if content is king, then we need to have professional standards in this country. And in order for those professional standards to carry on, it, it is important that certain content is regulated to make sure that the values, cultural values, of the Zambian people is taken into mind. The Independent Broadcasting Authority remains committed to growing the media industry in Zambia and ensures that they practice in accordance to the existing legal framework and state standards of broadcasting.